to our God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent His only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave His life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's continue in our prayer and praise. For all that we need in life and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ, have mercy for the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. Amen. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of our praise, we join in our verse, O Lord, our Lord. Go to our Lord with the prayer of the day. 
Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. Take away the burden of our sins and make us ready for the celebration of your birth, that we may receive you in joy and serve you always. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This is where we do the children's message. I have one, well, two, but we'll have Kenson come up here because I actually had him in mind as I was thinking about this, and this works out well. If Devin had been here, I was also ready to have my phone in the back with a app up of meanings of names. And I checked mine out. And again, I, I'm in awe. Stephanie's name means crown. Right? Mine is God's blessings. Who would have known? Okay. I, I checked Devin. He is the defender. Okay, that, that's that meaning. Kenson, guess what? When I put your name in the app to get your meaning, you know what it said? Not found. <laughs> and part of it is the part of it is part of it is the spelling and the meaning because Kenson's name actually does have a very special meaning. His name is Kenson Jeffrey Smith. Kenson is his dad's father, his grandpa who passed away a number of years ago from cancer. Oh, no, no. My, my daddy's name is Thomas. Your daddy's name is Thomas, but Thomas is, your daddy's dad's name was Ken, Kenneth. And so daddy and mommy said, we're going to name you Ken Sin in honor of Grandpa Ken, and your middle name is my name, Kenson Jeffrey. So it's a family name. And why we're talking about this is that in our gospel reading, we hear how the angel comes and talks to Joseph and he's to give two very special names. The one is the prophecy, Emmanuel. In just a moment, we're going to sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel, means God with us. And also the name Jesus, which means Savior. Names have important meanings, but the names that God gave to Jesus, the Savior, Emmanuel, God with us, speaks wonderful truth. It says, yes, God is with us every day. We're going to talk about that in Kingdom Kids, and we're going to talk about that in our worship. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for your love, and thank you for all the names that you have given to us. How thankful we are that your name means such a wonderful message, that you came to be with us and to be our Savior. Thank you. Amen. Awesome, awesome. All right, you can head back for Kingdom Kids, okay? Go, go with Grandma. Made it through that. <laughs> this is grandpa hair. I did ride my motorcycle, but I had a toque and a helmet on, and it's still standing crazy up because the Lord's blessed us with these kids this week while grandma or while mom was back out in Texas doing a rodeo. So we got them all week long. And she's flying back today. Yeah, we're excited. They're going to be with us all through Christmas and New Year's, so we are excited about that. So thanks for letting me do that little special thing with him. We turn our attention now to our readings for this fourth Sunday of Advent. The first reading is from Isaiah 7. The Lord's speaking through the prophet Isaiah to King Ahaz. God comes to him and says, ask for a sign, any sign to be assured of the victory I intend to give you. But King Ahaz is one of those silly, foolish, rebellious kings who doesn't want to acknowledge God's presence and power, so he acts all, well, I won't test God. God is displeased. God is displeased with this king and with the hardened hearts of the people. And yet, instead of just wiping them all out, look at what he does. He gives them a prophecy and a sign, a promise of something that we are so excited again to celebrate this coming weekend. The virgin will be with child. That's the sign. We read from Isaiah 7. 
Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or the highest heights. But Ahaz said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David. Is it not enough to try the patience of humans? Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel. Here ends our first letter to the reading. Romans. They were reading that first chapter, the, the greeting, and you'll hear at the end that very familiar greeting that many a pastor uses at the start of the sermon meditation. Grace and peace to you. Right? Grace and peace. God's undeserved love which grants us this peace. May it rule in our hearts always. And it's able to. Because that promise, that prophecy spoken through Isaiah was fulfilled. Emmanuel has come and he's with us. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God. The gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scripture regarding his son who as to his earthly life was a descendant of David and who, the, and who through the spirit of holiness was appointed the Son of God in power by His resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Him we receive grace and apostleship to call all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith for His name's sake. And you also are among those Gentiles who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be His holy people. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Here ends our second reading. Our verse of the day taken from Matthew 1. Hallelujah. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Hallelujah. Like those that are able to please stand for our gospel reading today. Dear friends, we stand in respect to the Holy Gospel our Lord gives us through the Gospel writer Matthew, reading the first chapter, verses 18 to 25. Names mean something. We again hear how the angel comes and speaks to Joseph in a dream. He believes, listens, and Emmanuel comes. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Here ends our gospel reading. Praise be to you, O Christ. To all, who are loved by God, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Grace and peace.
God's undeserved love and the peace it gives us. And we need that peace. So listen again to the Gospel reading. It's the basis of our sermon meditation on this fourth Sunday of Advent. Oh, the scandal. The wedding hasn't happened yet. And she's pregnant. It might not have been Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, or any of these other things, but there was social media, even in that day and age. Probably quicker and more incredible because of the total, complete reliance on word of mouth. Sharing the message, sharing the news. You knew it was spreading all over. Joseph heard. Your bride-to-be the one that was betrothed to you, probably was a planned and arranged marriage. That was part of the custom of that time. But there was an expectation. Faithfulness, purity. The word's out. She's pregnant. Joseph's heart must have been hurting. He's kind of sunk, disappointed. Now what? But we hear of his character. He's a good guy. This picks us up here. Verse 18, this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. This is the word of our Lord, dear friends. That's Matthew's account of the Christmas story. How the birth of the Messiah came about. God kept His promise. A virgin is pregnant. But no one was thinking that, not at that time. Not even Joseph, who was a righteous man, faithful to the law, but yet caring for this young woman, that he wasn't going to get the zealous Pharisees together with a bunch of rocks and go and stone this adulteress to death, which by that law they had every right to do. He wasn't going to do that, nor was he going to make a big deal of it. He was just going to quietly let things go away. Because he was a caring man, a considerate man. That was his plan. Just to divorce her quietly. But that wasn't the plan. And so the angel came and spoke to him in a dream. what's the first thing the angel says to him? Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to take Mary. Don't be afraid to go through with this plan. Don't be afraid. It's 
coming Saturday, we're going to hear that message again. Actually, this morning, 11 o'clock, if you stick around for the family chapel time, you're going to hear that phrase again when the angels show up at the shepherds as they're watching the flocks at night and the angels come to them and said, fear not, don't be afraid. Let's think about this for a minute. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? What, what brings fear to you? I was reading a commentary middle of the week, I think it was on Thursday morning. This one pastor admitted, he says, you know, ever since I went and saw the movie Jaws, I am terrified, terrified, terrified of sharks. And he says, and the most ridiculous thing is, I've lived in the Midwest my whole life and I've been serving this congregation in Kansas for the last 25 years, but I'm still utterly afraid and terrified of sharks. I guarantee he's not going to come and visit us here in Daytona Beach and go into the ocean. <laughs> but maybe some of you can share that fear and don't really care about jumping in the ocean and swimming with the sharks, even around our area. Right? New Smyrna Beach, shark bite capital of the world, they say. But in all seriousness, what creates fear in your heart? Maybe it's the doctor's visit. Because you're not feeling right, things aren't right, you're not good, and you just know they're going to find some. Or they've already found something, and now you've got to go there, and maybe you're afraid to hear what the options are or aren't going to be. Not a fun place to be. Or you open up the mailbox, and there it is. That envelope with the letter, the heading, IRS. Right? Brain aneurysm. Oh, man. Friends, in all seriousness, there are many different things in our life that can terrify us. We understand the fear that Joseph was having at this time. This wasn't supposed to be happening. And that's our challenge too, right? In our world, in our life, what we're most afraid of are the things that we can't control. What we're most afraid of are those unknowns. What is going to happen tomorrow? I don't know. I think of that phrase. I don't know. I'm in that grandparent mode right now. Our other grandson back in Colorado had this cute little way of saying, and, and Grandma would tease him about that all the time and ask him a question. He'd go, I don't know, Grandma. But the thing was, is that it was, Hudson, what's two plus two? And he was only two. And he'd go, I don't know, Grandma. Right? And then his dad would whisper in his ear, it's four. And he'd say, it's 40. He was close. It's cute when we might know something. We say, I don't know. But the reality is, there are many things we don't know. I don't know what the doctor's going to say tomorrow. I don't know how your financial challenges will get fixed. I don't know if you'll get hired in that job you're hoping to get hired. I don't know what next week, next month is going to look like. You have ideas. Think next week we're going to be praying and hoping our heat strips and our units all work well and we get some warmth because they're saying a low of 20 in Florida. Maybe we'll get a white Christmas in Florida after all this year, huh? But we don't know. I mean, we've got forecasts, we've got ideas, we can prepare. 
But until that day is here and happening, we don't know for sure. And sometimes that can create a lot of fear. How did God take care of Joseph's fear? Right? He sent a messenger to him and gave him a message in a dream. And he needed that dream because though there were the Scripture passages, Joseph needed to understand that those prophecies that Isaiah had spoken to all the people through King Ahaz was now for him. The sign will be of God's love and faithfulness so that that grace and peace are there for the whole world. That virgin whom you are engaged to, who is to become your wife, will be your wife because what's conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. The virgin is with child because God kept His promise. And the sign of His grace And His peace is being now fulfilled. Joseph had that dream. And here's the awesome part. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him. And he took Mary home as his wife. And he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name Jesus because that's what he was told to do. Because he was going to be the Savior of the world. And Joseph believed that. Joseph trusted that. And that's why today we've joined together in our hymn of the day to sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Because Emmanuel has come. Miraculously, purposefully, and prophetically. He's come. Miraculously. Because there's, there, there's no other explanation. But the angel came and told Joseph, don't be afraid. Yeah, people are going to talk. There's going to be the rumor mills. There's going to be the conspiracies. But don't be afraid of any of that. Take Mary as your wife. This is God's plan. It's a miracle. Joseph did what he was told to do. He believed that because Emmanuel, God, had come to him. Emmanuel has come to us also. And it is a miracle. It is a matter of faith. There's no logic here. There's no scientific explanation. This is God fulfilling what He proclaimed and said He would do, and He's done it. And He kept His Word and His promise, and that's for our benefit. That's for our strength. So that, though I don't know what's going to be happening in the days to come, I do know God is with us. And that's a miracle. And that, again, reminds us of God's awesome power, and it's real. And He comes for a purpose. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. That's why Christmas is such an awesome celebration. That's why this is such an important time of year. It is fulfilling God's promises and it's bringing about this needed purpose that Jesus would come, be born of a woman, born under the law to keep the law perfectly for all people, for me and for you, So that when He died on that cross, His death counted for me and for you and for the whole world. He came to be the Savior of the world. He came for a purpose and He fulfilled that purpose. And so the angel speaks to us also today just as He spoke to Joseph and said, don't be afraid. You don't have to be afraid. God in His wisdom knows you and I don't need to worry about tomorrow and next week. We don't need to have all the details. We can't handle that. What he says is he's already there. God is with us. He's with us every step of the way. He will not abandon us. He will not turn his back on us. He doesn't go away from us. He's got a purpose in our life every day, and he desires to fulfill that purpose. To make all things work out in accord, to grant us that grace and that peace. That's his promise. The prophecy is fulfilled. Emmanuel comes to be with us again today. And he's with us every step of the way. And when he's not, 
As Martin Luther once quizzed, who left? In those days when maybe we feel as if God is so far away, I'm not feeling that connection. Martin Luther challenges us to ask the question, who left? Because God says he'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. He'll never turn his back on us. So maybe it's me. Maybe in my rebellion, like King Ahaz, maybe in my stubbornness and selfishness, maybe I went away from God for a time. Maybe I thought I wanted to call the shots. Maybe I was tired of all that religion and that spirituality and all the other philosophical thoughts that get into people's minds and heart and are convinced that that equals God. And they run away. Or they've been hurt and frustrated by others who claim to be Christians, but the love of Christ is so far from their lives, their words, their actions, that they've been hurt. And they've turned their back and they've walked away. They might have justifiable reasons and excuses, but understand, Emmanuel, God is with us all the time. He doesn't leave us. He doesn't control us. He doesn't manipulate us. We have free will. That free will is to say, you know what, I want to do it on my own, and we'll be utterly disappointed every time. And then we'll need that angel to come and say, don't be afraid, God is with you. Because without God, we'll be terrified, and deservingly so. But that's not how God wants us to live. Emmanuel, God with us, miraculously, and with a purpose, every day of our lives. This is His Christmas gift to us that we get to enjoy every day. God with us. And so we shout and sing for joy and rejoice in the blessings that God gives to us. That was a cool dream that Joseph had. It's pretty special that God shared it with us again today and that these words are spoken to us. Don't be afraid. God is with you. Live each day in that confidence and trust. Amen. Dear friends, may that peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard and keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's continue with the words of the Nicene Creed as we make confession of our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Continue now with bringing our offerings of love and thanks to our Lord.
Go to our Lord now with the prayer of the church, and we also join together in the Lord's Prayer. O Emmanuel, our King and our Lord, the anointed of the nations and their Savior, come and save us, O Lord our God. O wisdom proceeding from the mouth of the Most High, pervading and permeating all creation, mightily order all things, come and teach us the way of prudence. O come our wisdom from on high, who ordered all things mightily, to us the path of knowledge show, and teach us in her ways to go. Rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to you, O Israel. Gracious Lord, you have sent your Son to redeem us from sin. He is with us every day in every way. We thank you for the blessings of his presence in our life. We thank you for the strength and the gift you give us through your holy word and that assurance and that reminder that we need not dread or be afraid of anything. Lord, we are sorry when worry, anxiety, fear, and stress seem to rule our hearts and our minds that we forget your power, your promises, your strength, and your will. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your persistence in continually coming to us with the gift of the Holy Spirit, that our faith might be strengthened, encouraged, and nurtured. May you continue to be with us, bless us, and help us. Lord, as we come to you today, we prepare for that wonderful celebration. You came and made your presence known. You came to be the Savior of the world. Help us to walk in that faith, in that trust every day. Help us to walk in that spirit of joy, knowing that you are our God and our King. Lord, guide us and direct us. Be with those that are dealing with things that can easily bring fear and terror into their hearts. Speak to us all with that assurance that we need not be afraid, for Emmanuel has come and rules in our hearts each and every day. Lord, bless those who are dealing with health issues and trials. Bless those that are dealing with relations and emotional and mental challenges. Bless those, Lord, that are dealing with the trials and challenges of this materialistic world and their society and their needs uh, of the work that is laid out before them. There are many different challenges and trials that we all have to face. But how thankful we are we don't have to face them without you. Continue to be with us and make your presence known. Lord, hear us as we come to you in that prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Continue as we prepare for the celebration, Lord's Supper. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He sends the Holy Spirit to testify that we are His children and to strengthen us when we are weak. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of His Christ. To Him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever.
Thank the Lord and sing His praise. Tell everyone what He has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and proudly bear His name. He renews His promises and leads His people forth in joy. With shouts of thanksgiving, alleluia, alleluia. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.